The year 2023 has seen tremendous improvements in Nigeria's aviation sector as it continues to heal from the COVID-19 pandemic. However, under the prevailing harsh economic circumstances, seeming baby steps in the sector have become less sure-footed with ongoing concerns about the state of infrastructure at Nigeria's airports, lack of foreign investment and cutthroat competition among local players. We are now being joined by Mustafa Sheikh Abdullahi, who is a registrar, African Aviation and Aerospace University, for a chat about Nigerian aviation sector in 2023, the gains, challenges, and prospects. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on the morning show today. Good morning, Steve. Thank you for having me. Thank you indeed, Mr. Abdullahi. All right, let's dive straight into it. Um, 2023 is almost over, and compliments of the season to you, by the way. Uh, 2023 is almost over. And to you too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there are a few developments in the aviation sector that Nigerians will recall or would not forget in a hurry. Uh, in particular, uh, will be the um, drama around the uh, Nigeria Air, uh, which, you know, as everybody can see, you know, is nowhere in sight. What, uh, uh, what will you remember the aviation sector for in 2023? What stood out and what lesson do you think that and Nigerians uh, must have learned as to how to get things right as far as the aviation sector is concerned. Uh, once again, good morning. Uh, as you said, the drama around uh, <laughs> Nigeria Air. Uh, it has been an exciting journey uh, around it, but uh, it has grown to become quite a delicate uh, issue, you know, uh, because uh, emotions are, are getting high on that. And uh, as, uh, as the Honorable Minister has said, uh, has been saying over the, over the weeks, since, in fact, since he came on board, he has been saying that uh, when he came, he needed time to really study what must have uh, gone right, what must have gone otherwise, you know. Uh, so uh, as we are all aware, the Honorable Minister, uh, uh, Festus Kea Musan has submitted uh, a very, uh, uh, a very uh, uh, big report to Mr. President. And as he said last week, we are all waiting for the feedback from the presidency so that we can chart the, the, next, uh, the next line of action. So as you said, it has been dramatic. But uh, I think uh, any, any response from the presidency will be for the positive and the, for the, the general uh, benefit of uh, Nigeria. And Nigerians. Thank you, sir. So we've seen the Nigerian air debacle you, happen well. at the at the beginning of the year. We also saw Emirates airline pull out, um, saying, citing that they're finding it difficult to repatriate their funds. This year as well, we saw the issue with Max Air getting set, suspended for a period of time. On a whole, what score, like what score, would you give the Nigerian aviation sector? for 2023? And what should we look at when we go into next year? Oh. Well, about Emirates uh, Aviation, uh, Emirates Airline uh, pulling out, it has not been uh, a one-time thing. Uh, I think it has happened almost three times within the past, uh, within the past uh, three to four years. And the issue of uh, repatriation is not only a Nigerian issue. I think uh, many other countries are, feeling similar, are facing similar challenges. Uh, the big question is, uh, other airlines are still surviving, uh, you know. Uh, Emirates must have, have, uh, have its own, or the company, have other reasons to, to be the first to quickly pull out. Uh, but as, uh, as we are all aware, uh, a very big step has been taken by the current administration to make sure that that issue of, uh, especially as we, all regard, uh, as we all know the challenges with the Forex, uh, you know, but the current administration, as we are all aware, has taken a very bold step. And as we all know, I think uh, gradually payments are being made to, to these to this, uh, this airlines. So uh, as you asked something about uh, Max Air, I didn't get that correctly, please. Yes. So I asked because earlier in the year, Max Air was suspended for a period of time. And there have been a lot of questions being raised online about the safety of domestic travel in Nigeria. 
So what would you say that you see as an aviation expert? What scorecard would you give Nigeria when it comes to safety and domestic travel within the country? Okay, uh, to make it clearer to everyone, uh, aviation is a highly regulated uh, agency or industry rather. And uh, what happened to Max, that was a, a significant uh, incident. And I think that happened between uh, Yola and Abuja when the, airline, uh, when the aircraft landed. And uh, I think the nose gear issue or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. As, as I said, it is a highly regulated uh, industry. So immediately that thing happened. The next thing to do is to say, hey, stop. Uh, the, uh, Max, stop. Let's, let's have a thorough assessment of what must have led to that uh, incident be before it becomes a very uh, unwanted uh, accident. So their, their suspension was not really uh, a big deal, uh, you know. Uh, it, it, it had to be done at that ma material time to make sure that, that a very thorough assessment has been conducted for, uh, to ensure that such uh, incident doesn't happen again. In aviation, you have incidents almost every day, you know, but that means every day you study what goes on, what is going on, what led to what, and, and, and the rest before it becomes a very big uh, accident. So it is a daily occurrence to have incidents, but whenever it becomes um, uh, above normal or more than, uh, or uh, there's an anomaly in it, a first step is usually taken, and that was what, uh, what was taken by NCAA immediately when we had the incident of, uh, of Max Air. Uh, and uh, as we all know, Nigerian airspace is one of the safest in Africa, in the world. Uh, you know, for the past uh, how many years, the, the, we thank God, there has never been any, any civil uh, accident, any civil aviation accident that, is, that has cost lives. If, if you can recall, uh, a decade ago or 15, 20 years ago, when you're just waiting for the next one to happen. You know, so I think we've we've gone far, and uh, Nigerians are really safe uh, in our in our airspace. All right, Mr. Abdullahi, um, th there is a new government in town, of course. I mean, it's it's seven months already, almost, uh, and of course, there's a new minister of aviation, uh, Festus Kiyamu, uh, who new sheriff, yes, who has been yes. changing, you know, making changes uh, in the sector. A whole new set of directors have been appointed. Uh, but people, you know, close watchers of the sector say that uh, there is a lack of coherent air transport transportation policy uh, in Nigeria and that um, the sector is overdue for drastic reforms. What will be your specific advice uh, to the new government of Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Sinubu, uh, in particular to the Minister of uh, Aviation and the new set of directors that is getting, given the fact that um, uh, people are looking for a more coherent policy that can assist in uh, a shaping of the sector. Steve, as you rightly said, uh, you said the sector is overdue for a radical change or something like that. Uh, for, for, uh, for drastic reforms. We should, we should give the government... For, for draft, uh, drastic uh, response, Reform. you said? Reforms. 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 Drastic reform. Yes. Yes. And I think, to be just, you know, as you said, it's just seven months into the government. Uh, maybe what, what if this is the beginning of the drastic reform that uh, you are calling for, uh, you know? So we should just try and exercise a little bit of patience, you know, uh, and let's see what happens uh, in the next year or two. And as you know, we have a new set of uh, heads of agencies, new set of directors, and all we should do is, should, is to give them maximum support. You know, as they said, soja come, soja go, barak remains. <laughs> so all Nigerians, I, I want to invite all Nigerians to really give maximum support to this set of uh, new heads of agencies and their directors. Thank you, sir. As you said, soldier girl, soldier come. <laughs> Our former Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, has now been requested, has been called by our representatives in Abuja to come and face some questions about the Nigerian air debacle. How do you foresee this going? Um, you know, Nigerians have been talking about the airline that never was and the launch that we all saw on the 26th of May where the former minister said that this would be for us and for generations. However, till date, we have not seen one plane or one flight. So how do you foresee the 
you know, what the House of Reps would be looking for and what we should look forward to in the Nigerian air, um, area in Nigeria. For our honorable members uh, in the Green Chamber, uh, they're doing their job and uh, they're doing it excellently well. So for them to call on any Nigerian, especially those that have served at high offices like that of uh, ministers, you know, they can call them at will to answer any query, to answer any question. So I believe they're doing their job. Probably in their line of uh, investigations or research, they must have found something that they need the former Honorable Minister, Senator Heidi Srika, to come and answer. And I think it is, it is a routine thing. It has happened to many other ministers. And it will keep happening. Questions will be asked, and I believe answers will be available. So uh, they are doing their thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think they've, they've given the date for the former minister to come. They didn't only invite the former minister to come. They, even, they also invited the current minister, uh, Mr. Festus Kiamu, and the acting head of uh, NCAA, acting DG NCAA, Captain Najamo, to come and uh, make some, some clarifications. So I just believe they're asking questions to, to get further answers that uh, can further enlighten Nigerians. All right. Um, before we let you go as we prepare to... Uh, a roundup. I'd like you to address two um, uh, Jamin uh, questions. Uh, first will be to speak to why there seems to be um, a high cost of tickets uh, in the Nigerian av aviation space. Um, well, we can attribute the one for local travels to maybe the season. But on a general note, the question of why Nigerians who are flying to other parts of the world uh, pays almost twice if not triple what others who are flying say to London or to Paris or to the US from Ghana or from Cotonou, you know, pay, you know, uh, uh, far less. What is responsible for things like that? I mean, so many uh, uh, arguments out there as to why Nigerians pay that much. And then secondly, uh, I also like your thoughts on the coming on stream of the Dangote refinery and of course the roaring back to life of uh, the Portaco refineries, uh, especially with their expectant um, uh, um, influence on aviation fuel, jet fuel, uh, that people think that the Dangote refinery will be very big on. Is this something that you think that the, the sector should look forward to fervently? Just two minutes, please. Uh, yes, your, your first uh, talk about the airfare. Yes. Uh, we have to be true to ourselves that uh, the Naira has been quite unstable for some time now. And uh, we have to give it to the current administration for trying to stabilize it. So that might have been a, a very uh, big reason to why the, the tickets are high. And uh, for, for our local airlines, you know, whatever they do, they do it in dollars. They do their sea checks in dollars. They do whatever, and they, they buy spare parts in dollars. So it's a, it's a direct reflection of uh, the Nera the, the, the fluctuation. Uh, no, no, the no, 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 but very quickly, very, very quickly, Mr. Abdullahi, on the dollar thing, uh, I, I understand the, you know, the, yes. the effect of the FX, but I'm saying that if you are trying to fly either BA or Air France or any of the, of the airlines and you have been charging dollar, I'm saying that somebody who is flying from Accra or Cotonou will be billed uh, say $500 per trip, whereas in Nigeria it will be $1,200. That's what I'm saying. It's about the cost, not about, you know, the exchange rate. Same six-hour flight. Okay, um, most recently, most, most recently, uh, similar questions have been thrown to many people within the aviation sector to, to get an answer to that, uh, uh, to that, uh, to that issue. Uh, the airlines have been called uh, by the heads of the ministry uh, and I think most of their answers is relating to that issue of uh, the, the, their funds repatriation. Uh, you know, you have classes, you can have economy, and you can have Y class, T class, and the rest, Q class, and the rest. So what they did in Nigeria is most of these airlines, they shut all the lowest uh, classes for economy, for example. You can have an economy for 200,000, and the same economy... Uh, a different class selling at uh, 700,000. So all they did was to shut down uh, all the lowest uh, classes uh, that can be available to Nigerians while they can be available to, let's say, Ghanaians or Nigerians or 
same, or our neighbors. You know, that is what the airlines uh, are claiming to have done. Uh, and as I said, the issue of, uh, it, it all goes back to the issue of repatriation. And uh, a lot is being done currently to make sure that a significant amount is being uh, made available in Forex for, this, for these airlines. Nothing has happened to their funds. It's just the issue of getting the Forex equivalent to be able to, to, to give these airlines. So all they did was to shut down the lowest fares that are available. So that is the reasons the airlines are given. But as I said, uh, discussions are on top gear to make sure that the best is made available for Nigerians. All right, Mr. Abdullah, we thank you so much. We have totally run out of time, but thanks for your very uh, insightful, insightful analysis. Thank you so much for joining us on The Morning Show.